uh, if you could begin by um, identifying yourself and uh, your I'm, position here at school. Yes, I'm uh, Armin Marsivian. Uh, I'm Liz Kulgowski. Uh, well, my name is Ken Gatsky. I'm a professor of philosophy here and chair of the philosophy department. I am a professor of journalism here, uh, adjunct. I teach multimedia. Uh, I am a professor of philosophy at Southern. And I've also uh, teach in the Honors College, where most of my teaching interactions with Dan Orr took place. And um, I'm also a former student. I was in the Honors College and graduated in 1998. And I've been here since uh, the flood, just about 40 some years, whatever, 42, I guess, depending on how you count. Um, what happened in this class? <laughs> yeah. Um, Well, well, it was, he created an environment where you wanted to do well. He was always, almost without boundaries, I would think, uh, in terms of what he wanted to do. He was willing to go just about anywhere. I, I guess, I guess the, 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 the best way to des describe it is that, uh, you know, Dan, um, Dan would have this very, it's almost a mischievous way of interacting with, with the students in the classroom. So um, he, he was, I'm sort of a, at a loss here for any, and I'm thinking of specifics, but it was, it was, it was, it was always a good sense, sen good good-natured kind of ribbing. It wasn't a personal thing. It was, I'm doing this because it's, it's going to help you. When students would say things that he thought were just sort of absurd, he would, he would play off on them in a way that was good-natured, humorous, not, and, and respectful, but would highlight the kind of absurdity of the kind of statement that a student w would make and you know st students some students say things without thinking very much and one of th one of the things that he was always concerned with is getting students to think deeply about what they're saying he had a reputation from what I know he was really hard <laughs> and he was really scary and intimidating uh, but not but ultimately in a good way. So if you were receptive to learning and you were receptive to um, what he was teaching and the, w the style in which he taught, then it was great. But there were a lot of people who he rubbed the wrong way because they, were, they had come from certain environments where they felt uh, privileged and they felt that they knew what they were doing. And his whole thing was, you're 18, you don't know what you're doing. Uh, no matter how many times people told you what you were doing, that, that you knew what you were doing, here's another way to think of it. And for the, for the students who ended up, mostly my friends, who took to that, they were able to really succeed. But there were a lot of people who were saying, oh, he's a jerk. All he does is rip up my stuff. Uh, you know, I'm not learning anything from him. But that was, to me, the people that really didn't take his advice and learn from the valuable insight he was giving. I think he had the reputation as a hard grader. Uh, he was somewhat frustrated at times about uh, students worrying about grades and things like that. There, uh, I can remember a couple of times when he uh, said to classes uh, in where, where they wanted to talk about the grading of the papers we had just handed back or something. I don't remember the exact details, but I, I remember him saying something like, okay, you all get A's from now on. I don't know. I got a C plus in the class. I remember it. And it was the, I think, maybe the lowest grade I got. And it was the best grade I got because I really worked to earn that. And some of the best classes are the classes where you work the hardest. And, um, the, and that's because of him. So I do take a lot of what I learned from his class and from his, my experience with him and in general. And I try to bring that to, to the students who are here now. Dan uh, was, as uh, I might have mentioned to you before, was very unpredictable, and it was always uh, 
was always uh, coming to class and wondering where we were going next. Uh, uh, he had he had an incredibly lively mind, and uh, and it even though we prepared somewhat in advance of the class, uh, it was one of those classes that uh, you know was not s scripted. Dan was never scripted, uh, and he uh, he he always was uh, a person who who. Uh, really took the cues from what students said in the classroom and that was one of the one of the things that uh, uh, that I ad admired about him you know coming as a new new professor you know you come with a script <laughs> you know you come to class you think you can control it and and uh, there's a there's a Dan taught me the sort of the, the virtue of, of chaos in the classroom <laughs> we followed the ideas wherever they went. Uh, and I think this was Dan. If you look at all the things he did around here, they always had this kind of very open-ended uh, aspect to them. He could look at almost anything and see lots of sides to it. And he was willing to play out any one of those sides. Um, I remember once we did a, an honors college course together, uh, the language of art course, I think, but must have been. And we showed some film Dan showed uh, things that were somewhat artistically challenging, let's say. And the students didn't really respond to him. So I brought in the 1979 Superman and the 1989 Batman, and we looked at the first, we looked at the two places where you first meet the superhero in each film. And it just turns out that both of them happen to be uh, on a rooftop, uh, on the top of a building. Um, and I remember being so struck by that Ort just took that idea. He, he just took that idea of rooftops, building tops, and what you might do with them, and, uh, and just ran with it, and just talked on for a half hour, got students to, uh, involved in, in thinking about. And, and I remember at some point, at 15, 20 minutes into this, him saying, you know, we're, we're talking about rooftops, and I want you all to, re to, to recognize that we're not even talking about movies yet. We're just getting rooftops straight, and then we can go back to these films and ask, what's the rooftop doing in them? So, no, he was good. He was good at what he did. I wasn't afraid to not have a script. <laughs>